Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to bring you an identification video on a plant known as common burdock. Common burdock is an extremely popular medicinal plant, and it's very commonly used for many things from diabetes to rheumatism as a blood purifier to help stimulate digestion, and even for boils and abscesses, or even a wash for hives. But before you go to use it, it's important to know how to identify this plant. So let's take a look at some of its features. At the very top of the plant, we're going to notice the flowers and the seed pods. And these are those very common burrs that you're going to get whenever you're walking through fields. And dogs oftentimes get these on their fur as well. These are the flowers and the seed pods. And this plant will flower anywhere from July all the way through October. The flowers on this plant are dying because, well, it hasn't rained here in a long time. The rain we have had has been so small that it doesn't have enough moisture for these flowers to actually fully grow. But whenever you do see the flowers, they will be a pink to a red or a purplish color. The color can kind of vary a little bit, especially depending on how you interpret the color, but they are generally going to be a pinkish purple sort of color on the flowers. Once the flowers have fully bloomed and opened and pollinated, these seed pods are going to get bigger and bigger, and then the flowers will die off. These seed pods have very distinct burrs on them, and these are very commonly found, and a lot of people know this plant from these, but they don't always know what plant it comes from. However, these feel a lot like Velcro in the hand, and while they're young like this one right here in front of us, they're still very soft. They don't poke or anything, but they will stick to skin and clothing and fur and things like that. There is also another burdock species that's called great burdock. Great burdock comes from Asia, however, it is widely used in Asia, but there's a way to tell the difference between common burdock, like we have here, and great burdock. So how do you tell that difference? Well, you look at the very top where the seed pods and the flowers are, because the seed pods on great burdock will actually come out of a stem, whereas as we can see here on common burdock, they're very tight. They hug the stem and they hug the leaf sections where they're starting. So that's a really good way to tell the difference. They're both usable in the same ways. There's no difference between how you would use these plants. You can use the leaves, you can use the seeds, and you can also use the root. The tap root is most commonly used of this plant, and besides being medicinal, it's also edible. If we start at the ground to look at the leaves of burdock, we're going to notice how large these basal leaves are. And the leaves are going to get smaller and smaller as you go up the plant, like we saw at the top. These leaves are very broad, they're very long, they're ovate in shape, and the margins are generally going to be slightly wavy and rippled like we can see on this guy right here. But if we look closely at the margins of these leaves, we're also going to notice these very, very tiny teeth running along the margin of the leaf. And now on the basal leaves, these teeth are a little bit more distinct and prominent Versus once we get towards the top of the plant, we're going to notice the margins of the leaves start to become a little bit more smooth than the ones on the bottom. So this is a really interesting feature. We also notice that the leaves at the top aren't near as wavy on their margins like they are at the bottom of the plant. However, they do hold the same ovate shape and they are broad. They just get smaller and smaller as we go up the plant. If we look at the main stem on burdock, we're going to notice this very distinct groove running all the way up and down the length of the stem. And this gives it sort of a celery-like appearance, and we can also notice these purplish red striations or stripes or lines running up the stem as well. Right here, if we look at this node, we're going to see this little sheath covering another leaf stem coming out of the main branch. This will also, as we can see, have these red striations or stripes running along its length. If we take a step back a little bit, we can notice the growth pattern on burdock is very bushy. It has a whole lot of stems and stalks coming out of it. We can see all of these multiple stalks and stems coming out of it right here. All of this is from one taproot, so this is just one plant. We can see how many of the leaves are down at the bottom and how big they are versus those smaller leaves as we go further and further up. Now the leaves on burdock do grow in an opposite pattern. Let's take a closer look at one of the higher up stems so we can look at this feature by itself. As we look on this small stem coming out of the main branch, 
We can see that the leaves are growing in an opposite pattern and they are going to grow opposite all the way up the entire plant, except for the basal leaves, which grow in more of a basal rosette sort of a pattern. So this is another good feature to look for whenever you're looking for this plant because early in the spring, the leaves do look a lot like rhubarb leaves, which are poisonous. So you do not want to grab the wrong plant. So it can be a good idea to spend a couple years with this plant to see it in all of its growth forms so that way you don't make a dangerous mistake. If we look very closely in the nodes on the stems, we're going to notice a lot of little bitty leaves coming out just like we can see right here. But we're going to notice that these nodes grow opposite of each other. They're going to grow on one side, then the other side, then the other side, all the way up the plant. Burdock can grow in a wide variety of habitats, though it's usually found in fields, clearings, on the edges of cornfields. And right behind this plant that we're looking at right now, we actually do have a really good sized cornfield. This, however, is on the edge of my driveway, and behind it there's some willows, there's some wild grapes, and on the other side of that is a small marsh area with a lot of cattails. So you can find it in a wide variety of habitats. I, frequent, I will commonly find this plant growing on the side of roads, especially in forests and parks and things like that. So you want to look in a wide variety of habitats, but you can always identify the second year part of this plant by those burrs. This plant is a biennial, which means that the first year produces its leaves, then the second year it'll shoot up and produce its stems with its flowers and seed pods. You want to use the root, the tap root, of the first year plant for medicine and also for food. So make sure you keep that in mind if you're wanting to use this plant. So that right there is how you guys can identify common burdock and a couple of tips on how to separate it from great burdock. They're both usable in the same ways for food and medicine, so that's a really nice thing to have. I thank all of you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.